Hi, this is Carrie, Christ-Centered Counselor and Life Coach with Promised Coaching. Today I'm going to talk about why love can't save the narcissist or psychopath, whatever you're dealing with. And the reason why I bring up the two is because I recently watched a video from Dr. Romani on the differences between a psychopath, someone with antisocial personality disorder, and someone with narcissism. And I think it's important to address the differences between someone that is under the category of a psychopath and someone who's a narcissist, because it's important to understand what you are dealing with in your individual situation and why identifying the differences between these two is so important as far as how you navigate the relationship and break free from it. So one of the things that she pointed out about narcissists, and psychopaths do this too, but narcissists do it to a much higher degree. And that is they use flattery to deceive you. So they use a lot of flattering words and empty promises and a lot of self-praise to essentially sell themselves to you. So that's something important to recognize because first of all, if we look at the scriptures, flattery is actually a sin. And there's a lot of scripture pointing to this, how flattery comes from the mouth of the deceitful. So it's important to recognize what flattery is, this falls under the umbrella of love bombing. So you can look at it that way. Narcissists are very good at flattering their victim. They're also very good at lifting themselves up and praising themselves versus giving praise and honor and glory to God, which all praise and honor and glory belongs to. And psychopaths flatter too, but they don't do it to the level and degree that a narcissist does. Psychopaths are a lot more calculated in navigating relationships and how they hook you in relationships. So a psychopath tends to understand that flattery can be a red flag. And so they're very cautious in how they flatter their victims, which they still do, but again, not to the degree that a narcissist does. But they're just a lot more subtle and clever in the way that they do this. So moving into the relationship with these people, whether it's a committed relationship or a marriage that you're in, as you know, the devaluation begins after they feel that they've secured you in the relationship with them, wherever they would like that to be, to begin to devalue you. So after this takes place, and this can take place years into the relationship, it could take place months in. So it just depends on wherever they feel secure, whether that's after getting engaged, after getting married, after having children, to begin the devaluation process and trying to warp your mind and brainwash you, so to speak, in accordance to their will and what they want in order to control you and control the relationship. As Dr. Romani was describing in her video about these differences, something that is important to address is that Having a relationship and living a life with a psychopath tends to be a lot scarier than living with a narcissist. So as your relationship continues with a psychopath, it gets darker and darker and darker. And with a narcissist, it I wouldn't describe it as getting so much darker as I would describe it is getting more chaotic. And that's another thing that she addresses, that life with a narcissist tends to be very chaotic, but it doesn't go as deep into darkness as a relationship with a psychopath. 
Now, both of these types of people are living in the dark, in their minds, in the way that they think, in their behaviors, in their dysfunctions. That is not a question. They are both living in the dark. They are not walking in light. Both a psychopath and a narcissist seem to find some sort of pleasure or power in going to battle with their victims. And something that I had a recent conversation about with one of my watchers here on YouTube is that a woman going through narcissistic abuse is incomparable to a man going through abuse with a narcissist or a psychopath in most cases. And the reason why is because men and women were built differently. Women were built to be submissive. Under the design of God, we were built to be nurturers, to have a gentle spirit, to be led, and under the protection of a man and to feel safe under that protection. A man was not designed to be this way. A man was designed and created to be the protector, to be the savior-like figure for his bride as God designed marriage to be, like the Christ-bride relationship that he has with us. This was the design for man and woman from the beginning. So a man was built to be able to fight battles and women were not. So a woman being in a relationship with an abuser has a far different experience than a man being in a relationship with a female abuser. The fear, the terror, and the trauma is just not the same. So as much as men want to comment on my videos and say, hey, women do this too, I understand that women can behave in all the ways that I've described in my videos, absolutely. But the experience is very different. And it's very different for the very reasons I just explained. So I don't want to discount or minimize what men might be experiencing in relationship to a narcissist. I just want there to be a very clear understanding that our experiences are very different and that this channel is focused on helping women in their experiences. So let's get back to this fact. As women in narcissistic relationships, we feel like we want to save the man that we love. We feel a responsibility to help him see the light, to come to the light, to bring him out of darkness. And what I want women to understand is that this isn't your role. Just as I just explained, God created man to fill this role for you, not for you to fill this role for him. And I don't mean it's a man's job to bring you out of darkness, but it's his job to protect you and love you and provide a safe haven for you as Christ did the church and to lead you in such a way that is honoring and purifying to your mind, your body, and your soul. Narcissists, psychopaths will not do this. They are living in darkness. It's not even possible for them to do this so long as they are where they are. And it's not your responsibility to bring them out of that. And when we start taking on that role, we step in to a godlike position where we are playing God and we are not God. If they won't even receive the love and truth and wisdom of God, they are certainly not going to receive it from you. So God is chasing after us. He provides us with opportunity after opportunity. And that's something I listened to on a sermon this morning from Pastor John MacArthur. God 
chases us down. He is trying to draw us to him all the time and present opportunities to us. And we can choose to receive those and seize them or not. And these types of men don't seize the opportunities of God. They don't seize the opportunities and the blessings and the gifts that God has given them in order to live the abundant life that he has for them. They reject them. They're naturally attracted to you because you are light. It's like a moth to a flame, so to speak. They're attracted to your light. But at the end of the day, they don't receive it. And there is no light at the end of the tunnel with these men. They are double-minded in just about everything that they do. And as the word says, those types of people shouldn't expect to receive anything from the Lord because they can't gain control over their own minds. The word says for us to take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. So that way we can live and walk in his will and receive the abundant life he has for us. These men will not do that. They have no control over their own minds. And so they are constantly at war with themselves while at the same time lifting their own ideas and their own will up above God's because they have become their own God. This is idolatry. They live an idolatrous life. They don't put God above themselves, ahead of themselves. It's everything that they think and everything that they want. And that is what they live by. They don't live by the word of God. And so no matter how much you believe in them, no matter how much you give honor and praise to them, the more submissive that you become to them, the uglier and darker and more chaotic it gets. And that is simply because they don't live under the authority of God. They live under the authority of their own chaotic double minds. So the sooner that we can recognize this and accept it, because acceptance is the hardest part, because that requires you to surrender your own will the control that you want over the outcome of the relationship and to fully surrender to God. This requires you to fully surrender your own will, your own desires, and the person that you are with fully to God because only God can save this person. It's only the love of God and if the love of God can't save him, your love can't even come close to that because the love of God surpasses all. And if he will not even receive that from the Lord, he will not receive yours. And it's going to be a constant battle for you so long as you're dealing with that relationship, a battle that you were not built for. So allow the Lord to fight that battle for you because only he can. I hope this video was helpful. And if you like it, please hit like, subscribe to this channel, and you'll see more videos like this. I would also love to hear from you. If you have any thoughts or experiences that you would like to share on this topic, please feel free to comment and take care.